Hello everyone and welcome back to the boudoir. I am your host Aisha Jones. By the title of this video, you know that we're not playing around this week, okay? Because I've been seeing some things on my TikTok for you page and just in life in general and I'm tired. I'm sick of it. I have to use my voice for the greater good of this world and for my ladies, okay? We're going to be talking about how a lot of you lack self-respect and you date losers who show you time and time again that they could not care less about you. Now, before we get into it, you have to pinky promise me right here, right now, get locked and loaded, come close. Pinky promise me right now that you're not gonna get in your feelings, okay? And even if you do get in your feelings, if you feel attacked, just listen, okay? I'm talking to you as a friend. I'm talking to you as a friend who is not trying to see you get in these situations anymore, who's trying to unlock and unleash the queen that is inside of you because I'm tired of sitting on the sidelines and watching y'all cry over some dusty five foot seven who probably has all types of bacteria underneath their fingernails. I'm getting real tired of seeing my sisters go through this, okay? So if you're ready to have a real conversation, if you're ready to get locked and loaded, grab yourself something to drink, grab yourself a blankie, grab yourself a teddy bear, okay? And squeeze tight, girl, because it is time for the boudoir. A lot of you women, lack self-respect. I don't care if that hurts you, I have to tell you that because we need to get to the root of the problem, okay? When I say you lack self-respect, I don't actually mean that, okay? The self-respect is in there, it's just lying dormant. It's laying dormant right now and we need to wake it up, we need to unlock it. So I'm hoping this episode is going to give you the push you need to get it together, okay? Cause we're tired of y'all coming on this here internet telling us about your ain't shit dudes, your poorly behaved husbands, your incompetent men. We're tired of hearing about it because we know that you guys are just gonna go on this internet and complain and complain and complain and complain and, complain, and you're just gonna still go back to the same dude. And then you're gonna come back on the internet next week to tell us about all the other stuff that he did to you. We're tired of hearing it, I'm sorry. We don't care. We don't wanna hear about it anymore. And unless you're actually going to make the necessary moves to cut it off and leave for good, be quiet. I saw this TikTok by a lady named Rach and I'm going to insert it for you in part because I want you guys to get a gist of what we're gonna be talking about today. So here you go. But what do you want us to say when you post about your terrible man? What do you mean you work three jobs? and can't ask your live-in boyfriend for $20. What do y'all want us to say? I'm praying that that woman with her three jobs and ain't shit, man, I'm praying that she just wanted some engagement on her profile. But somewhere out there, there's women really living these lives like this. And when you get online and tell us and stand by him, what do you want us to say? Are you saying it on the internet to vent? Are you saying it for engagement? Don't judge me. You opened the door wide for me to do so when you clicked send, when you clicked post. What do y'all want us to say? And this isn't even to the women who post the jokes of like, aha, my husband never changes diapers. This is so funny. I'm not even gonna get to them because they're in a different type of delusion. I'm talking about the women that know they're being treated wrong and come online and tell us and then get mad that we type in the comments, why are you with him? But what do you want us to say? So the million dollar question is, why do you guys come on the internet and tell us about how shitty your boyfriends are just to go back and lay down with them once again? What would you like us to say? What do you want us to tell you? Okay, your fiance of seven years, because that's a real thing I saw, your fiance. And actually, you know what? Let me just make this little point. A lot of these things that these women post online, I believe is rage bait. I think that a lot of couples see that they have a light bill to pay and they're like, oh damn, how am I gonna pay this bill? So then they get online and then they tell us some ridiculous story that may or may not be true, may or may not be fabricated. And then we all run into the comments and then we all stitch it and then we all talk about it and go in a frenzy and then they collect the checks and laugh at us. So I just want to make that point. A lot of this stuff is rage bait, but all of y'all can't be joking. All of y'all can't be hee hee ha ha -ing. Some of y'all are dead ass serious with the shit you put up with. 
okay? And I have a problem with that because I don't like seeing my fellow ladies put up with shitty behavior. You know what? The T is, is y'all will sit here and excuse the mess that your men put you through. But if your friend doesn't wish you happy birthday and on midnight at the dot, you're ready to cut them off. Why is that? What's that about? Why do you have grace and empathy for people who don't deserve it is my question. I, I just don't see how someone can drag you through the mud and then you're here posted up with them. My man, my man, my man, my man, my man, my man. Get it together. Get it together, ma'am, okay? You don't feel ashamed speaking the words and hearing the words that come out of your mouth. Oh, my, my boyfriend, he didn't do this. Oh, wait, 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 sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. We're talking about the fiance. I saw this TikTok, whether it's real or not, I don't know and I don't care, but we're just gonna use it as a jumping off point. She's engaged to someone for seven years, which is already just, and she has kids with this person. And she's going on the internet asking her man, why don't you get me any flowers for Valentine's Day? The flower shop is right by your job. Why don't you get me flowers for Valentine's Day? And she's telling us how he has not done that in the entirety of their relationship. So I'm just curious and confused as to how you didn't realize after the third, fourth, fifth Valentine's Day of him showing up empty handed, I'm just confused as to why you expect a different result. Why would he change how he's been moving when you've showed him that you are more than happy with getting absolutely nothing? You've shown him time and time again that you're okay with scraps and crumbs. So why would he then do something different when he knows he doesn't have to? He doesn't have to go spend the $6.99 on the roses because you, you've you showed him that I will still lay down with you. I will still give you children, even if you're not doing the things that I require. And I'm just going to shut up and take it. And before you shaming warriors get in my comments and say, stop shaming people, stop. No. Okay, this is my unpopular opinion. This is my hot take. Sometimes shame is necessary. Sometimes you need to feel shame because shame means that you understand that what you allowed is wrong and it's a no-no. And shame makes sure that you don't go and repeat the same mistakes you've been making. Shame is necessary. You need to feel a little tinge of like, ooh, why did I do that? Why did I put up with that? Listen, I have dealt with some bullshit in my life, and yes, I do feel shame. Now, that doesn't mean I'm ashamed of myself. That doesn't mean I'm gonna sit here and like beat myself up about it because you don't know what you don't know. You don't know that something is not good for you until you get out of the situation because hindsight is 2020, okay? But shame is necessary. So yeah, we're gonna have this conversation and we're going to judge slightly and we're going to shame slightly because what's going on? Okay, the definition of insanity is doing something over and over and over again and expecting a different result. Why would this man miraculously come and do the whole Prince Charming thing if you've shown him that you're perfectly fine with mediocrity? But let's get off that lady. I was just using that as a jump off point. You guys date losers that don't even like you, that see you as a quick, easy convenience, and that see you as a fleshlight. And it's the truth, I'm sorry. And I'm not gonna sit back and keep my mouth shut anymore. We have to talk about this and we need to have a real conversation because it's getting scary out here. The things that I'm seeing and hearing on these internets. The main reason why people put up with shitty behavior is because they are scared and they have a lack mindset. They think that if they don't hold on to this crumb of a man, that they're never going to get anything else again. So they have to hold on to it because they think they can't do better. And I find that so sad because you would really rather put up with something that you're not happy with than just be by yourself and figure your own stuff out or give yourself the life that you want instead of relying on somebody else, huh? <laughs> Some attention is cheap. Like you really need attention that bad that you are going to let people drag you through the mud for the sake of having a man. What is that mentality? I don't get that. 
And listen, it's one thing if you are 18, 19, 20, college age, that's fine. You know what? You're allowed to be dumb when you're that age, okay? I did it. I did my time. I did my due diligence. But once I'm seeing some grown and seasoned women still falling for the okie doke. Once you hit 25, 26, 35, 40, what are we, what are we doing, ladies? What are we doing? It's too much. There's too many resources out here. Sheer Seven exists. So many other people, myself exists. There's so many resources out here. There's so many men out here who are waiting for someone like you to enter their life. And you're wasting time with crap, with dog shit. And I don't understand why. I'm just simply not attracted to people who don't put effort into me. Like that is so not my thing. Last week I was talking about my turn on and turn off. Nonchalantness was one of them. And y'all seem to love nonchalant men. I don't understand that. Now let's be fair for a second, let's be fair. If you have gone through something traumatic in your life or if you were raised in a household where your needs weren't met and you had a lot of like avoidance in your life, then I get it. You tend to seek what you grew up with. And I'm not gonna sit here and discount that because that's truly the main reason why a lot of people find themselves in situations like that. But when do we find self-respect, everyone? That's what I wanna know. You're not a kid anymore. You're a grown adult, okay? And right is right and wrong is wrong. You're willing to take bits and pieces and crumbs from a man because you think that's what you deserve and you think that that's all you can get. And that's actually really sad. Like, and I, I mean that wholeheartedly, like that's sad because the person you're with is a reflection of what you think about yourself. So if you're with a dude that treats you like an afterthought and who can barely remember to text you back, barely remember to text you back, you think that that's all you deserve. You think that you're only worth a quick pump and dump and some Taco Bell. And that's not true. That is so not true, especially if you're watching this video, you already know that you're worth 10 times, a thousand times more than what you're getting, which is why I say, it's not that you don't have self-respect, it's just that that self-respect is lying dormant right now, and we need to wake it up. Wake her up, y'all. It's getting weird. You sitting here doing tarot readings and pick a card and buying crystals and please, oh my God, please, can I get a text back? You think your dream man is gonna have you doing tarot readings to make them text you back? You think that's what your dream man is going to do for you? You're wishing on a star for a text back. You have to, okay, so in these situations, it is so important to not get your feelings so attached into it. And I know it's hard, especially if you sleep with somebody, it's curtains, cause you, you're just so hypnotized by what they can do to you that you don't see logic and common sense. But I'm gonna need you to take a step back. This is why we don't sleep with people prematurely, but if it already happened, you can't go backwards. So listen, you have to take a step back and look at the situation objectively, or look at it as if you were watching a TV show. If you were watching a TV show and you saw this character who was hoping and wishing and begging for someone to care about her, wouldn't you look at it and be like, girl, what are you doing? So you have to look at yourself objectively, like take a step back and just look at the situation for what it is. Should you be on your knees begging for a text back from somebody who likes you, allegedly? No, someone who likes you is not going to have you proving your worth to them. And that's another thing. Why am I seeing people negotiate their worth to a man? What? Why, wh there's no way in hell I'm gonna prove my worth to somebody who's in my face already. Why are you in my face? Why are you trying to talk to me? Why are you trying to get with me if you can't see my worth? Why are you asking me what I bring to the table if you're already here in my presence trying to get me to like you, trying to get me to prove my worth to you? That makes no sense. You either see my worth or you don't. If you don't see my worth, get out of my face respectfully disrespectfully actually get out of my face but if you do see my worth i shouldn't have to sit here and beg to be treated like a human being to be treated like someone who is liked i shouldn't have to do that 
So again, at some point you have to sit back and be like, what am I actually doing? What am I actually putting up with? Why am I settling for a situationship? People only treat you how you allow them to treat you. I'm gonna repeat that. People only treat you how you allow them to treat you. So if you're allowing somebody to play in your face, they're gonna play in your face, my friend. I'm so sorry to tell you, but that's how it goes. But if you tell somebody, these are my boundaries, these are my standards, you either meet them or you need to leave, then they're gonna move accordingly. They're either gonna leave you alone because they know that they can't meet those standards or they're gonna fall in line and act the way they need to. So I need you guys to figure out what your boundaries are and what your standards are. If you know you're a lover girl and you love the good morning texts, you love you know random cash apps sent to you, if you love flowers every week, you have to make that clear and you have to let them know in the beginning and you have to stick to that because you can't be like oh these are my boundaries these are my boundaries and then you're sitting here letting him break those boundaries and not listen to your boundaries and then you're still with him you can't do that because he's gonna see that you can't stand on anything you can't stand on business because you're not even following your own boundaries so why would he follow them if you can't even follow your own you have to set the standard immediately and you have to follow it okay there is not a shortage of men out here there's plenty of men out here who are willing to do exactly what you need them to do and who aren't going to fight you on that and act like it's so difficult. Because someone who respects you is not gonna mess with your boundaries. That is a clear sign of disrespect and you need to let that go immediately. So if you think you deserve princess treatment, you think you deserve the horses, the chariots, the whole nine yards, then you need to act accordingly. The second somebody doesn't treat you the way you need them to treat you, you gotta let them go. You have to be strong enough to let them go and stop getting your feelings so deep into it. And that's another thing. We need to stop romanticizing men. We need to stop acting like Prince Charming is gonna rush in and save us and save the day, okay? Save yourself. Save yourself from the disappointment and stop putting people on a pedestal. Stop putting celebrities on a pedestal. Stop putting men on a pedestal. Put yourself on a pedestal. The same way you go above and beyond these men that do not care about you one bit, you need to pour that into yourself. How are you treating yourself? Do you take yourself out on dates? Do you take yourself to the nail salon? Do you show yourself love and gratitude every day? Okay, so like stop being so crazy about men, especially in this big old age. Like if you are over the age of 25, 26, 27, stop. That's for high schoolers, that's for college, okay? Some of y'all are seasoned into adulthood, like seasoned seasoned, and I'm seeing some strange things going on and I don't like it, I really don't like it. We need to get the self-esteem up, we really do. And I will do more videos on self-esteem and confidence because I know I sound really harsh and mean in this video, but I'm saying it like this because I know what it's like to not have self-esteem and to let people treat you any kind of way and I don't want to see anybody else go through that. So that's why I have to say things the way I say them, otherwise it won't click. Because when you only hear, oh no, you're perfect the way you are, and like, no, you don't need to change anything about you. No, some of y'all need to change. Some of y'all needed to get it together quickly. Some of y'all need to find some self-respect. Some of y'all need some self-esteem. And you, not, you guys need to stop begging for crumbs. Like, you don't feel pathetic begging for crumbs. You don't feel pathetic begging someone to like you. <laughs> like come on now we can do better than this ladies you deserve the trips you deserve the cars you deserve the clothes you deserve the pasta lapsa you deserve it all you deserve the world so start acting like it stop begging people to care about you stop proving your worth to men who don't see your worth if they don't see it then you need to tell them to get out of your face because you're wasting you're, you're taking up space you're breathing my air then if you don't see my worth you gotta go because I'm not gonna sit here and audition and, and list off my credentials to in hopes for you to like me. Like that's not, that's a waste of time, okay? Like I said, the second something doesn't align with your standards and you know, if you really like this person that bad, you have a conversation and be like, listen, I don't appreciate you treating me like an afterthought. I would like planned dates. I don't like the spontaneous, you know, whatever, blah, 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 what are you doing? I want real planned things. I want what I want. If you can't meet those standards that I require, you gotta go. 
okay? Why are you holding on to seven inches of dead weight? You gotta cut the dead ends off. Cut those dead ends off, ma'am. You want long hair so bad that you're willing to keep the scraggly old breakage and heat damage ends? No, no, it's not a good look. You gotta cut them off and start fresh. Cut the dead weight out of your life, everyone. Stop waiting for people to change and also stop trying to change men. Why do y'all wanna do free labor? Is this Home Depot? Is this Amazon furniture? Like, this is not Home Depot. Stop trying to change people. And actually, changing someone and trying to change who they are is extremely toxic, and we don't talk about that enough. Stop trying to mold people into what you want them to be and just find somebody that already comes equipped with what you need. Why are you trying to fit a square into a round hole? That's a waste of time. You really, you're gonna sit here and try to change a grown man? He needs to change himself. He needs to heal himself. It's not your responsibility to change somebody. It's not your responsibility to do somebody else's healing for them. They either want to do it or they don't. So again, why are we holding on to dead weight? Why are we trying to change somebody into what we want them to be instead of just finding somebody who meets that? Stop dating for potential. Stop waiting for them to potentially change into the person you need them to be. And look at what they are. Look at things for what they are. Stop trying to find deeper meaning. Oh, well, he's he's busy right now. So I don't know, no, no. But he was just texting me like for a month or two months straight. No problem. But all of a sudden he's so busy that he can't even send you a hello text, a good morning text. How are you text? Come on now. Do you potentially want a good person or do you want an actually good person? Stop being so easily oppressed by the bare minimum. You can do so much better than what you're doing for yourself and you are sitting here blocking all of your blessings because you need this crumb of a man so bad. Like I really think some of you are masochists and you enjoy the pain of being treated like crap. I really, I have to believe that. Or you have some sort of humiliation fetish. Like why do you like to stand next to losers? Stop dating losers. Dating a loser also makes you a loser. You are a loser via osmosis. You are also a loser if you are hanging out with losers. If you are sleeping with losers, you too are a loser. Again, if you are somebody who grew up with avoidant parents or you just didn't get the nurturing and love that you need, stop trying to date and work on yourself. Like dating should be your last priority because that is the perfect way to find people who are going to take advantage of you and who are looking for people like you who are gonna be content with, you know, not getting anything for Valentine's Day. They're looking for people like you. So you have to take a break from the dating. I know everybody wants companionship. It's one of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, okay? Everybody needs somebody. Everybody wants friendship and community and all that. But if you are not okay in here, you're going to fall for losers. So get off the dating market, get off the apps, Stop accepting just any old situationship and work on yourself. You have to get to know who you are. What do you like? What are your hobbies? What do you like to do for fun? What are your values? Get to know yourself the way you're trying to get to know these dusties. Staying with these losers makes you feel something because you're trying so desperately hard to fill a void that's missing inside of you. But all you're doing is making the void bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger because you're not getting your needs met. You think you are because you're, you want attention and companionship so bad that you're willing to take the first thing that comes at you, but you're actually going to make it worse for you in the long run. So instead of letting it get worse, cut and run now before you really get hurt later. Enough with the situationships, enough with the crumbs, enough with the struggle of, you don't deserve that. You don't deserve to be treated like an afterthought. I'm gonna tell you that. If nobody's told you that, I'm here to tell you. I don't want any of my sisters falling for crumbs. Enough, it ends today. It ends today. If you are dealing with somebody who doesn't care, you. You see this finger? You. If you were dealing with somebody who doesn't care about you, your homework assignment is to cut it off now. Don't let me come back on this thing next week and you still with that person, okay? You have seven days to get it together, ma'am, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm serious, okay? I'm gonna know, I'm gonna find out. If you're, still, if you're still dealing with the loser, I'll know. Don't ask me how I'll know, but I'll just know, okay? Your homework assignment is to get it now. 
And then once you get out of this situationship that's not meant for you, you're gonna, there's gonna be feelings of shame that come up and there's gonna be feelings of like, why did I put up with this? Why did I think that this was okay? And honestly, I'm here to tell you that that is okay. It is okay to feel shame at some of the past things you did. Some people might think that that's toxic of me to say, but I honestly don't because for me, shame means that you see what you did was wrong. If you feel no shame, then you don't see anything wrong with what you were putting up with. But shame means that you're growing and you're leveling up, you're leveling up and you're evolving. So you do have to feel a little bit of shame. Now that doesn't mean to be like, oh, I'm such a stupid idiot. Why did I put up with this? No, 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 no. Like that's not what I'm saying to do. But yes, you should feel a little bit of shame. You should feel a little bit of shame that you were willing to settle for just any old thing. That feeling, always remember that feeling. The next time, because it's gonna happen, there's Dusty's uh, infiltrating this world everywhere, so you're probably gonna come across another one. But now that you know what it feels like to deal with one, you're never gonna go back. Because do you wanna feel that feeling of shame again? Do you wanna feel cringed out by what you were willing to put up with? Of course not, because that doesn't feel good. Shame makes you feel icky and weird and it triggers you. That's a good thing though. You should be triggered because that's not okay. That behavior is not okay. It is cringe. It is cringe that you were putting up with that. It is cringe that I was putting up with BS. It is cringe. Like objectively, yes, it is cringe. That doesn't mean you have to hate yourself. That doesn't mean you have to call yourself out of your name. No, that just means you need to do better in the future. That's a part of life. Sometimes you're gonna do right. Sometimes you're gonna do wrong. It can't always be good. Sometimes you're gonna do things that don't align with who you are today. And that's fine because we're all learning and we're all growing. Okay, so I'm done yelling at you now. Now let's talk about some of the ways to help you guys stop dealing with losers and to stop, you know, going through this, okay? First and foremost, you have to decenter men, ladies. You have to decenter men from your life. Stop making relationships and marriage and, and boys and men and sex all you think about. You have to find something else to fill up your time because when you have time on your hands of course you're gonna sit here and daydream and romanticize and think about oh when we get married and how many kids are we gonna have and what are their names gonna be where are we gonna take them to school stop stop and take a step back and decenter men because i promise you men are not sitting here fantasizing about oh, what are our kids gonna look like they're not doing that they're not Okay, you got to play their game better than them. You have to know how the game works so that you can move accordingly. Stop putting men on a pedestal. Now I'm not cut cutthroat and ruthless. Like I do believe in true love. I am a hopeless romantic. I'm a lover girl, but I'm a lover girl with common sense. Okay, um, I'm just not going to take the first thing that comes at me. I actually vet people. I have standards and you should too. You do have standards. I know you have standards. You always have had standards, but it's just you had a little moment. You had a little lapse of judgment just a tiny bit of lapse of judgment, but it's okay because you know now that you're not gonna do it anymore, right? Because I already told you by next week, that situationship is over, okay? But society has taught us to put men on a pedestal and to do their emotional labor for them. And it's a big scam, it's a huge scam. And a lot of us are realizing because we've seen our grandparents, our parents put up with some bullshit ass men and now we see as a new generation, it's not supposed to work this way. Why am I supposed, why am I trying to prove my worth to a man? So now that we know better, we have to do better. Center yourself, center your community, center your family, center your friends, center the greater good of the world. Like these are the things that should be at the top of your list, not a man, not relationships. And then also find some hobbies like there's so much in this beautiful, gorgeous world that you've not tapped into yet. There's so much uncharted territory. Do you know how to bake a cake from scratch? Do you? That's something you can do. How many languages do you speak? Do you only speak English? Well, we have a thing called Duolingo. We have Rosetta Stone. Does, it, does Rosetta Stone still exist? I'm sure it does. But we have so much, even YouTube, there's so many free resources to help you learn languages. And then maybe, I don't know, maybe you learn Japanese and then you take a trip to Japan and then you immerse yourself in the culture and then you learn and you expand your mindset. And they actually say that as you get older, you should learn more languages because it helps with your neuroplasticity and it helps prevent dementia and stuff like that. Find things that are gonna enrich you. 
Like read books on topics that you've never learned about before. Be curious, be willing to learn. Like there's just so much on this earth that you don't know about. And that's fun. Like that, the power that you had, the power in the unknown is so exciting. Like there's just so much to, dis to discover, so much that you haven't even learned about yet. And you have a whole life ahead of you to live. So use each and every day that you have to learn more stuff about yourself. What do you like? What don't you like? Do not hang out with male centered women slash pick me's. There's a saying that goes, show me your five closest friends and I'll show you who you are. If you're hanging out with a bunch of people that only talk about men, that only talk about their male problems, that only talk about how Jerome just won't act white and I don't know what to do, you're going to be the sixth one. You're gonna be a part of that. And also male centered women will get you hurt because they're always going to put their man before you. The second that they get in a relationship, they're gonna forget that they have friends. And people like that, you don't wanna be around people like that because they only they think that the man is the prize and they're gonna treat him like that. And they're gonna shut out everybody else that was always standing next to them just to be with them. And then the second that that man don't act right, she's gonna be crawling right back to you like, hey girl, I don't have a boyfriend anymore, so now we can be friends. Nope, it don't work like that. You shoot, you, sh you shooed me, <laughs> you showed me who you were already. So I'm good, I'm good on that. It's not cute to be so boy crazy, especially over the age of 25. Like enough is enough. Pick me's will get you into dangerous situations, okay? And then understand why you're so scared of being single. Why are you willing to take dog shit over being single? Like, is being single that bad that you're just gonna put up with any and everything? That's the question I have for you. Like, is being single really that bad? What are you running away from? What are you scared of? What is, what do you, what don't you like about yourself that you're running away from? and you're using relationships as a coping mechanism. You're using sex as a coping mechanism. No, ma'am, you, you're missing something in here and it's not a man. You need to figure that out for yourself. And that's a journey that might take a whole lifetime. Like we're all continuously healing. I don't think you're ever like healed and like, oh, that's it now. I don't have anything else I need to learn because life is always happening. There's always something that you don't know. There's always something that you need to learn. And so that is your life's journey. Your job is to figure out what makes you feel warm and fuzzy inside, what makes you feel fulfilled. And I promise you there is a life outside of relationships. There's so much outside of relationships. I'm not saying that being in a relationship is a bad thing, but being in a relationship with the wrong person is a bad thing. Again, why are you running away from yourself? What are you scared of? Why can't you stand the thought of being by yourself and hanging out with yourself? That is something that you need to figure out. That is another part of your homework assignment. Figure out Make a list of all the things that make you happy. Make a list of all the things you wanna learn, all the places you wanna see. Do you have your passport? When's the last time you've taken a trip? Go to the library, pick up a new language. Just do something that is going to enrich yourself and make you better. Go back to school, find a new career path. Just do something that is going to make you feel fulfilled. And lastly, we've all heard the phrase, treat people how you wanna be treated. And I think that is a load of bullshit. Treat yourself how you wanna be treated and treat people how they treat you. Don't overextend yourself and show empathy to people who wouldn't even spit on you if you were on fire. Stop extending empathy to people who don't deserve it, okay? That is going to make you depressed and that is going to make you beat yourself up. If you wanna be treated like a queen, you have to treat yourself like a queen. Because when people see how you carry yourself and how you treat yourself, they're either gonna be scared of that and intimidated by that and they're not gonna come up to you, which is a good thing. That's less work for you in the long run because you don't have to sit here and try to like figure out if somebody's for you or not. So that's a good thing. You want the dusties to be intimidated by you because you're not trying to attract them. You're trying to attract healed, healthy men. So treat yourself how you wish to be treated and the people that are for you are going to fall in your timeline. All right, you guys, that is the end of this video. I know it was a lot to handle. I know it was kind of scary and jarring, but this had to be said, okay? Cause I'm tired of seeing my sisters put up with crap. It's not happening anymore. You have until next Tuesday to get it together, okay, ladies? <laughs> Just know that you're a queen and to love yourself wholeheartedly because you gotta live with yourself for the rest of your life. So you better get used to her. You better get used to the person you are. And if you know that there's things you need to do to change, you have to love yourself enough to be honest with yourself 
to change those things. It's not gonna be easy. It might take you a minute to get the hang of it, but just watch people's videos that make you feel inspired, read books that make you feel inspired, and just live as the person you wish to be and everything will work out for you, okay? All right, I will see you guys next week. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like this video and subscribe if you are watching me on YouTube. And if you're listening to me on Spotify or Apple or any other streaming service, make sure you give me five stars because I would truly appreciate it. All right, guys, I'll see you next week. Bye.